Hi there, greetings and welcome to another video on surgical discussion. In this slide you can see four different colors. I'm starting from the top left side. This is a black color which represents a dark hard eshkar. If you encounter something which is hard and black and if you percuss it, it sounds hollow, it's good news. Nothing needs to be done here and the only thing that needs to be applied is probably tegaderm film or you can use Cavillon spray or Opside spray. Now to the top right is yellow meaning that the wound is having infection or having slough and there is an exudate there which is infective. This kind of a wound needs a wound bed preparation which is the combination of debridement, infection control, moisture balance, edge control and epithelization. At times you could have a combination of black and yellow, meaning that if there was a black eshkar and some people would have wrongly decided to use wet dressings on that, the wound would have become from dry to wet. Now this is a wound which needs urgent debridement or else be below the surface of the dark eshkar you will be having infective tissue which will actually cause sepsis. One should know how to differentiate between a black eshkar and infective tissue. When it's in uninfected, it's hard and when you percuss it, it is resonant. Whereas when it's infected, it feels mushy, there is loss of consistency and it smells bad. Now the color which is to the bottom right is a bright red and this means to say there is granulation tissue with infection. There is something which causes redness there. It could even be a very high protease level. And one to the bottom left is what we are targeting at and that is granulation tissue. Once it is granulated, it is time for our friends in plastic to take over and do something. Percentage area reduction refers to the percentage in which to which the wound size reduces. So what one needs to do is measure the length, breadth and width of the wound. The length is measured along the long axis of the body the breadth is directly perpendicular to that and the depth is the deepest portion of the wound. Also don't forget to check for undermining because if there is undermining then the size of your wound actually increases. Sheehan conducted this study initially somewhere in the 1980s. It was repeated again by Schneider. What Sheehan concluded was that if a wound failed to resurface and shrink by 50% of its original size in the first four weeks, then it was highly unlikely that this wound would close up in 12 weeks. Schneider found out the same thing, but he concluded that if the wound fails to shrink in four weeks time, only two to five percent of those wounds would completely heal in 12 weeks. Which tells you that if your wound fails to contract in four weeks time by 50 percent, you can be very sure that the wound will not close in 12 weeks time. In other words, uh, you can use this as a two week challenge that you should decide clinically in two weeks time what's happening because if in four weeks it can reduce by 50%, in two weeks you can definitely expect something like a 15 to 20% decrease of size. Now this two week challenge should be applied to your wounds whenever you try a different modality of dressing which means to say that if there is improvement in the wound but the wound continues to be infected it may be clinically justifiable to continue your treatment but if after two weeks there is no improvement of your wound this means that you should stop doing what you're doing and do something else try a different modality of dressing change the dressing you can even do a debridement again because that will press the reset button on your wound by creating a fresh edge and probably reducing all the protease levels. Also it helps by taking off the infection and it will promote epithelization and promote the migration of keratinocytes. One should realize that if you are doing let us say a VAC therapy or let us say you are using something like silver cell or honey dressing for more than two weeks and you don't notice any difference, it's time to stop and change your plan. 
this is a very common scene in the movies you'll see that there is the hero who is lying down in the bed with the dressing and the whole dressing is soaked with blood this is showing you the classical disadvantage of using gauze on the wound gauze is basically cotton fiber which has been twisted into threads and these threads are placed in a crisscross fashion now you one used to usually be asked the question that if you have gauze number 5 what does it mean it means that you have 25 squares per inch if it is gauze number 6 you have 36 squares per inch and the same way if you have gauze number 8 it would have 64 squares per inch gauze basically acts by capillary action in between the fibers of cotton there is a capillary space and when this capillary is in contact with any fluid the fluid will slowly get pulled from its level and get into the gauze gauze will absorb and slowly over time the gauze will start evaporating so this turns a wound from wet to dry therefore it is called a wet to dry dressing now this is potentially damaging to the wounds because wounds need a moist environment yes if there is too much of exudate gauze can help but remember that the exudate gets absorbed and so much of proteinaceous material then sticks to the gauze thereby making gauze ineffective it is also to be understood that if capillary action can take place from the wound to the outside it also takes place from the outside to the wound so if the gauze gets wet even microscopically that's when the organisms from outside of the wound gets sucked into the wound the gauze gets infected and so does your wound don't forget even your surrounding wound now will have the same organism gauze tends to stick to the wound so sometimes if some fibers of gauze remain there it could cause allergies and foreign body reactions because you wouldn't be able to completely take it off because it sticks to the wound bed when you pull off the gauze yes it is painful at the same time it will help you to do some debridement so if the wound has a lot of slough gauze would be a good idea when do you use gauze you can use it for infected wounds post operative wounds gauze is also have, uh, used as a filler for negative pressure wound therapy it can be used as a compressor let us imagine that you have done a debridement and you need compression use primary dressing materials and use it as a compressor outside it can be used for cleaning cleaning of the peri wound also so although gauze is old fashioned as a dressing material it doesn't mean to say it doesn't have any utility in the hospital these are gamji pads it was invented by a guy called gamji these have excellent absorption and the ideal gamji pad was nothing but cotton which has been given a wrapping by a gauze the advantage is that the gauze acts by capillary action the cotton increases its absorptive capacity and there is evaporation on the opposite side earlier this used to be used for highly exudating wounds but this has the same disadvantage as gauze therefore one doesn't use these pads very often in modern day dressings yes if you're cornered and you don't have any other dressing material then go ahead and use this therefore understand that gamji pads or surgical pads have an excellent absorptive capacity they even take the exudate laterally they work something like a pamper but they don't have the shielding capacity so use gamji pads with caution because it is just the same as using a very large gauze piece these are the sea weeds which are seen in the deep blue sea and this is what they look like when they are alive this is what happens to the sea weeds when they are harvested from the ocean and when they are in the boat haha <laughs> once the alginates and the sea weeds basically have been processed sterilized made into fibers this is exactly what they look like they can be either a fiber form it could be in a polymer form it could be in a powder form there are various manufacturing methods and finally the finished product is something that is sterilized and kept packed in something which is easy to use remember that these alginates can be made into fibers they can even be co-opted with hydropolymer 
or else known as hydrogel or hydrocolloid as the name can be. So these have various utilities as we shall see one by one. So we realize that alginates have been derived from algae and sea beads. Once it is produced, it is an extremely dehydrated product that can absorb water. Now if you take a gram of alginate, it can absorb up to 500 times its weight in distilled water. It can absorb up to 50 times its weight in normal saline. And it can absorb up to 11 to 50 times or 11 to 15 times its own weight in the form of exudates. So as the fluid gets more viscous, the absorptive capacity reduces. But you can realize that it can take up to 15 times its own weight in exudate. So it can be used for highly exudating wounds. Once alginate binds with water, it reacts with it to form a hydrophilic gel. So it is hydrophilic and it loves water and if you squeeze the alginate, the water doesn't come out very easily. So please use alginate for a very highly exudating or a transudating wound. The advantage of using alginate is that it's easy to apply and easy to remove. It washes off completely with saline. It does not interfere with granulation tissue. It ensures a moist wound healing. It is completely biodegradable. Therefore, even if a few fibers of alginate are inside the wound, don't worry about it. The tissue will take care of it by itself. Alginates improve the fibroblast mobility because of its chemical nature and also because of the promotion of moist wound healing. Many times alginate has been mixed with calcium, for example caltostat, and this helps in hemostasis by donating calcium ions. So this is another advantage if the wound is having some degree of bleeding or some oozing you can say, you can use caltostat instead of using surgicel. And you know pretty well that it is going to completely disintegrate and disappear. You must have seen these kind of uh, colorful balls, especially uh, in decorative material. They look very beautiful. But what exactly is this stuff? This great thing is called hydrogel. So let's get one thing straight. Each and every part, let's say many bricks in a wall, each brick is called a mer. You take two bricks and join them together, you call it dimer. You take six of them, you call it an oligomer. You join many bricks together, it's called a polymer. So mer is a single portion. Now hydrogel is nothing but a hydrated polymer. It is a polymer which is having a lot of water. It was manufactured somewhere in the 1950s. It's an artificial product or a man-made product. It contains 90% of water in a gel base. And this regulates fluid exchange, which means if there is too much of fluid in the wound, it will absorb that fluid and contain it inside itself. Whereas, if the wound is dry, it will start donating the fluid into the wound. So this is the meaning of fluid regulation. It is a physical principle. It doesn't mean to say that hydrogel has a brain of its own. It's purely based on its physical principle. The advantage of using hydrogel is that you know that it is 90% made of water. So it maintains a moist wound environment which helps in healing. It promotes granulation tissue and epithelialization. It also aids in autolytic debridement because there is water in the wound and this water is continuously in exchange with the hydrogel. Now the high water content cools the area and it gives some kind of a pain relief which can last from anywhere to from 6 to 12 hours. The dressing change is pretty comfortable because there is nothing like a wet to dry effect no kind of tug or pull or shear on the wound and hydrogels do not adhere to the wound surface. Now let us take hydrogel and alginate and put these products together and see the various products that are available in our hospital and realize how exactly to use them optimally. Nugel is basically a mixture of hydrogel and alginate it comes in the form of a tube. Once you take off the red cap, pull off the tab and squeeze the new gel directly into the wound. New gel, as I explained, has alginate. 
Therefore, it helps in the absorption of fluid and maintains a moist wound environment. The hydrogel component helps in donation of fluid and again it helps in maintaining a moist wound environment. Both together maintain a moisture balance in the wound. You can use new gel especially if you see that the wound is dry and you need to keep it a little wet. You can also use new gel in case there is some slough and you want to help in the autolytic debridement of the slough. Please do not put new gel on a very hard car. The best solution for that, as I showed you in the picture where it is black, is to use something like Opsite or Tegaderm or even Cavillon spray. You basically need a barrier there. In the original chart which I showed you, when you see that there is the yellow portion in which there is some slough, that's when you can start using new gel. You can also use it when the wound is extra red and you feel that the wound is maybe dry, it's not having much of exudate and you need to promote a moist environment, you can use new gel. And remember the objective of the wound care team is to convert a wet wound to a dry wound. When I say dry, I don't want to say absolutely dry in such a way that it looks like toast. You need to make a wound moist and that's the whole idea. New derm and biotin alginate are both entirely alginate based dressing materials. These are made of pure alginate and they are used when there is a heavy wound exudate. So use biotin or new derm when your wound is exudating or transudating heavily. Aquacil is a commercially available sandwich dressing. It has multiple materials as you will see in the next slide. Observe the different layers in this sandwich dressing. There is a waterproof layer, a soft absorbent foam pad, an aquacil special intersurface and a silicon non-adhesive layer. It, I'm calling it non-adhesive because it doesn't adhere to the wound but otherwise silicon sticks very nicely to the normal skin. The outermost layer of aquacil is a waterproof layer which prevents a two-way transfer. It's like a barrier so stuff from the outside can't come inside and stuff from the inside can't go outside. The foam pad here is a pseudo foam which has hydrogel which is interspersed inside it. So the foam maintains some capillary action and the hydrogel is a liquid lock principle. It locks the liquid inside it. The alginate layer is meant to absorb fluids very fast therefore maintaining a void, moist wound environment. The silicone layer is the wound contact layer so in case you're putting aquacel over anything like a periosteum or a tendon or a bone you don't need to add any extra layer. The silicone prevents the adherence there. You can use this in wet wounds, clean wounds and all kinds of wounds basically. Remember that Aquacel doesn't contain any antibiotic or antiseptic unless it is Aquacel AG which has silver. Now here the silver layer is kept just beneath the waterproof layer. The silver is meant to be there in the wound but the company states that you use silver to prevent the wound dressing from getting infected. So the idea of keeping silver near the waterproof layer is that as the silicone layer starts absorbing the material exudates through it, it reaches the alginate. The alginate then transfers the fluid to the hydrogel. Only when the hydrogel gets wet, that's when the silver gets activated and by capillary action the silver ions act through the dressing to prevent the dressing material from getting infected and this then slowly gets transmitted into the wound by capillary action. So yes, silver does act on the wound but the company's principle is that you're putting silver in the dressing to prevent the dressing from getting infected so that you can keep the dressing for at least a day or two. This is how exactly Aquacel works. Tender Wet Plus is an excellent dressing material. It's an amazing chemistry of how exactly they have got it together. Tender Wet Plus can be used for wounds which are having a lot of slough and which need chemical debridement. As mentioned, Tender Wet Plus has an amazing technology. They have taken the alginate and the hydrogel. They have chemically bonded this together so that it forms a special fiber or a fabric kind of material. Both these materials have been kept inside 
the wound dressing and the outer layer happens to be viscose. Now also inside the hydrogel and the alginate is a ringer's lactate. So this whole dressing is completely charged with ringer's lactate and also in addition to that there is PHMB or else known as polyhexamethyl biguanide. This helps to disinfect the wound. Now how exactly do you go around using Tender Wet Plus? When you open the dressing, you notice that there are two surfaces. The one above which is having multiple lines which are blue and white in color. This surface is meant to be not stuck to the wound. Whereas on the other side there is a bioactive side which has only straight linear lines and you can see it looks like a gauze piece that is supposed to be in contact with the wound. Now once in contact with the wound there is a constant exchange of ringers lactate from the tender wet plus into the wound. When this moisture balance occurs it promotes autolytic debridement and all the exudate now starts getting sucked inside the wound as it slowly releases ringers lactate. So ringers lactate is partially absorbed in the body because you know that it's isotonic with the body fluids. It doesn't harm and when there is too much of infection the exudates get sucked into the tender wet plus and it gets disinfected because of the PHMB. PHMB also acts on the surface of the wound. It's a mildly antiseptic agent and it ensures that the wound is not infected. You can keep tender wet plus in the wound for 72 hours. That's exactly as per the product manual. For 72 hours it can be left inside. It can left, be left to do its autolytic debridement. At the same time it has a beautiful result and you don't need to change it for 72 hours unless of course it gets heavily soaked. So this is a very nice dressing material so go ahead and use it. Caltostat is a dressing material made of alginate therefore it can be used for highly exudating wounds. It has calcium therefore it is also hemostatic. It can be used when the wound has just undergone debridement and it is oozing and after doing a good hemostasis you can use it instead of surgery cell. So it has both a hemostatic property and also it uses itself to absorb the exudates. But remember please control your bleeding well before using Caltostat. Suprasorb A is also calcium alginate. It has the same indications as Caltostat. You can use it for a very highly exudating wound. It works wonders. It's a very nice product. It's a different company. And that's all. Now let's move on to wound cleansers and debriding agents. Remember there is a lot of overlap. Tender Wet Plus also has the ability to clean the wounds and do some desluffing. So remember that these are not exactly put inside the box. But there is an overlap from one product to the other product. And certain products have many other qualities apart from only being dressing materials. As the name suggests, me salt. Yes, it does have sodium chloride that is salt. It also contains a non-woven fiber which is made of viscose and polyester. Viscose and polyester, both of them are synthetic materials. The difference is that polyester feels something like a plastic or something like silk whereas viscose it feels like cotton. Both these fibers have been knitted together and this is non-woven and they have a high concentration of crystalline salt. Now this crystalline salt will help to absorb the exudate, the bacteria and the necrotic material and all this stuff gets absorbed within the fibers of the viscose and the polyester. Therefore, when you pull off the dressing, it takes off all the exudate along with it. And remember the exudate even sticks along to the material of me salt. Therefore, it effectively supports the cleansing of wounds. It's very easy to apply. And you can use me salt for heavily exudating wounds. It is an excellent wound cleanser. So use it even for dirty wounds. A surface active agent or a surfactant can reduce the surface tension and thereby it can dislodge by mechanical and chemical action anything that is hydrophobic. Uh, to make that in simple English, surfactant acts as a soap and it can take off anything that is oily or having bacteria. Now, a cleanse 
a certain surface active agents and instead of using water it uses some degree of water and it uses some degree of aloe vera now this stuff doesn't require you to use any water and if you have a dirty wound you can see that this product is available in the form of a spray you can turn from a spray mode to a stream mode so you can use the mechanical effect of the spray and the stream to take off your exudates it doesn't leave any residue inside the wound all the stuff there is natural product and you can wash away this product after using easily with saline it doesn't injure or harm the intact skin and it can be even used for cleaning the skin of the patient it's an excellent product to use when you want to clean the wound and the peri wound but as common sense dictates first clean your wound and cover it up and then you start cleaning the peri wound once both areas have been mopped with saline then you can go ahead and start doing your dressing sin aqua in spanish it means without water this product is basically a layer of viscose it is a semi synthetic fabric which is charged with aloe vera which starts donating water so this therefore it is called sin aqua it contains phospholipid cdm it has a soap like effect and it is an inert cleanser it doesn't react with the body it also contains panthenol which is a synthetic moisturizer it forms a film over the wet skin and especially over the wet hair so when you use sin aqua you're supposed to place it on the wound and keep rubbing it gently for at least a period of 5 to 10 minutes the viscose layer will start absorbing all the debris and all the slough the aloe vera starts donating water and it will help for the surface active agent to stick on to the dirt and this dirt will stick on to the soap and the soap sticks on to the aloe vera so it is a mechanical and a chemical effect now when the whole aloe vera dries off the panthenol then sticks on to the hair to keep the hair smooth silky and shiny so sin aqua products are available for use over the scalp as a shampoo it's available as a cap place the cap on the scalp and keep gently rubbing for about 5 to 10 minutes so it can be used as a waterless shampoo sin aqua is used for cleaning of the wound and also the peri wound it's available as a spray and even as a rub in our hospital the ulcer cleansing system or is short form for ucs it's available in our hospital it's used basically to cleanse the wound and the peri wound but one needs to note that when you clean the wound you got to use ucs there for at least 5 to 10 minutes for it to have a good effect even when you use it on the peri wound use it at least for about 10 to 15 minutes it has viscose with a special physical arrangement it is it forms a little barbs there so when you use it and rub it across either in circular or criss cross motions across the tissues it will take off all the dead epithelial cells even takes off the slough so use ucs for about 5 to 10 minutes and look at the ucs you can notice that it has become visibly stained it has aloe vera which is used for hydration and it's acting there instead of water and it has allantoin which is a synthetic moisturizer it forms a nice film over the epithelium and even the granulation tissue peroxima is like your soap so the peroxima sticks to the aloe vera the aloe vera sticks to the viscose and that's both a combination of a mechanical and a chemical effect to cleanse the wound and the peri wound therefore the ucs and even the sin aqua when you use it both of them are atraumatic and they remove the fibrin the necrotic tissue the slough the hyperkeratotic edge and to some degree the bacterial biofilm the gauze will capture and retain all the debris that is removed it hydrates the wound and even the peri wound there is no bleeding and damage to the granulation tissue because it's a very gentle action yes it also depends upon your mechanical force if you use too much of force then you know you can cause bleeding from any wound it reduces the pain and increases the patient compliance and it shortens the time for the procedure as opposed to you doing a physical debridement when you use ucs it is painless 
and you can finish the job in maybe 5 to 10 minutes. This table will give you a different range from the contamination of the wound till systemic infection. When you say contamination, you mean that there are some bacteria present either on the wound or the peri wound, which is considered to be a normal phenomenon. You can even get contaminated wounds, for example a sacral bed sore gets contaminated when the patient passes stool. Critical colonization happens to be 10 to the power of 5 microorganisms per high power field. Now if the wound is actually colonized, there is nothing much to get excited about. So in both contamination and colonization, topical antimicrobial dressings like silver or honey or even PHMB dressings are not actually indicated because this bio burden is not causing you a clinical problem. When there is a localized infection, in other words if there is an abscess or if there is pus, now you require to use topical antimicrobial agents such as honey, silver, QT medsorbact or something containing PHMB or iodosorb. When there is a spreading infection and when there is a systemic infection, you need systemic antibiotics and definitely you need wound debridement. And yes, at that time you can also use topical antimicrobial dressings. So see the range from left to right and now you decide whether you really require to use things like honey or silver or something on the wound. Use it only for localized infection. Don't use it for every other wound just because you know you have the material available. Remember sometimes these can actually cause potential damage to the wound when they are not indicated to be used. Whenever there is any inflammation in the body and this is a general pathological principle there is a release of hydrogen ions or a release of acids and these acids will act on the wound or act on the cells and once the acids are released the only thing that remains is a very largely, char largely negative charged ion because you have taken off all the H plus ions. Same thing even happens in a respiratory burst in case of inflammation. So at the end of any inflammation you will have a huge negatively charged particle. Now this huge negatively charged particle will start attracting positive ions and most of the time you have either sodium or famously calcium and this is what explains calcification in chronic inflammation. Now silver still keeps acting, remember silver is positively charged and it acts on multiple sites in the bacterium. It acts on the cell wall, it acts on the fimbria, it acts on the mitochondrium of the bacteria and even its cytoplasm. Now silver forms a natural ligand with these different cell components therefore causing permanent damage, lysis, poor formation and complete death of the organism. Don't forget silver can even be toxic to the natural cells therefore don't keep on using silver when it's not required. Now the next major concern. Does the quantity of silver in the dressing material actually matter? Because to get a good wound healing you need 12 parts per million of silver. Whereas if you see the amount of silver that is contained within a silver cell dressing or any silver material for that matter it's more than 750 parts per million. You remember the policy I just told you regarding the negatively charged ion which is remaining after the inflammation? Well that's exactly what happens. When you have a hugely negatively charged particle it attracts a positively charged particle and silver is pos positively charged. Therefore the dead and dying tissues in the slough will usually keep attracting silver. It gets electrically neutralized silver take its, takes its effect. When there is a next particle, it sucks on another molecule of silver and that's it. So this is how silver keeps penetrating the slough tissue and keeps acting on the slough tissue. Remember that silver can penetrate up to 3 millimeters of slough and not beyond. So don't use silver cell material or silver dressings when there is a lot of slough there. Do a good debridement and then go and use the silver. If you have loads and chunks of slough, the silver cell dressing is absolutely useless. You are only using the alginate there for ex uh, absorption of exudates and yes the silver is there to prevent the dressing from getting infected. But will the silver really act on the wound? You have your answer. It doesn't.
The silver cell which is commercially available as a dressing material is a sandwich dressing material. Remember any surface can be put on the wound because it is a symmetrically made dressing. The first layer is a wound contact layer which contains nylon so it prevents adherence to the wound bed and nylon is an inert material. Secondly it contains carboxymethyl cellulose which acts similar to hydrogel. Yes it absorbs water but it doesn't absorb so much of water. The carboxymethyl cellulose is meant there to be only to absorb some degree of water so that silver can get activated. Remember silver gets activated when it's in contact with water and this is called charging the dressing. Okay, so when somebody tells you to charge the silver cell, it means keep the silver cell a little moist before applying it. Next to that you have alginate which helps to absorb the exudates and the silver is coated into the nylon and the alginate fibers and you use silver in the dressing as the company states mainly to prevent the dressing from getting infected. Yes, it does donate silver to the wound and that's how it, it has a superb mechanism of action. But remember that if you have too much of slough, don't expect the silver to penetrate the slough. Maximum penetration is 3 millimeters. Use silver cell for infected wounds. Use it uh, for wounds at risk of infection. And use it for dry, uh, dry wounds or other wounds which are not so moist to help maintain it getting moist. But in case you are using it for those kind of wounds, you need to charge the silver cell really well. You can also use it for exudating wounds because the alginate can absorb a hell of a lot of exudate. Remember, silver needs to be charged with water and don't forget that. When I say water, please don't reuse tap water, use normal saline. Now in the previous two slides, you saw a silver glandoform and you saw Mepilex border AG. Remember that Mepilex border AG is the same or just like Aquacel AG. So both of them are interchangeable and remember it's just a different company which makes almost a similar kind of dressing material. Now what is the appropriate use of silver dressing? Use it to reduce a bio burden in an acute or chronic wound and you can use it in a wound which is a high risk of infection or reinfection. There is a separate presentation on honey and this one slide cannot do justice to the amount of stuff that I have to tell you about honey. I'll just touch upon medi honey because in this slide you know we are touching about alginate and hydrogels. The alginate here helps to lock in the exudate. The honey has its own biological activity. The calcium present inside this dressing also is hemostatic. So you can use medi honey for infected wounds and wounds with a lot of exudate and slough. Remember please don't use a gauze piece over the honey because all the honey gets absorbed into the gauze piece and then this becomes absolutely useless. So either use an alginate or use a hydrogel dressing above the medi honey or else you can just directly put a tegaderm film so that the honey has its maximum biological effect. If supposing you feel that it's a dry wound and you need to make it slightly moist, use new gel and use honey on top of that. Or else you can just charge the honey dressing with a little saline and then put a tegaderm film on top of it. Yes, when you take off the honey dressing it looks absolutely alarming because there could be maceration of the peri wound and even the wound could look a little extra moist. It simply means that the honey is doing a good job. You just need to wash off the whole area with saline and let it dry for a while. Another trick here to prevent maceration is that after you clean the wound and the peri wound Close the wound with gauze piece temporarily and either use Opsite spray or Cavillon spray. Wait for a while for at least about 40 to 50 seconds for the Cavillon or the Opsite spray to polymerize. It forms a nice film on the skin. This is a nice barrier layer. Take off the gauze from your wound, do your wound dressing and then apply a tagadam. So chemically there is a nice barrier on the skin and there is no a risk of maceration. Don't blame the honey just because you have had a very poor result when you take off the dressing. If you do your dressing properly there shouldn't be any maceration of the peri wound.
there are couple couple of uh, iodine containing preparations which we use in the hospital betadine is one of them iodine is another it is nothing but betadine which has been put into a nylon fabric and once the nylon fabric has been charged it doesn't stick to the wound it's like a wound contact layer you can peel it off easily at the same time it has its antiseptic effect iodosorb is yet another iodine containing dressing available in our hospital cadexomer iodine is what is contained in iodosorb you are also using cadexomer iodine in a product which is called dura prep as the name suggests dura for duration a long duration and prep for preparation dura prep contains cadexomer iodine and it forms a film and maintains this layer for up to 24 to 48 hours when you do your prep with dura prep the same thing goes in for uh, iodosorb dressing it can remain on the wound for up to 48 hours and betadine is an excellent product and these iodine containing products they penetrate the cell wall and disrupt the proteins and nucleic acids they are very useful against a wide variety of bacteria fungus protozoa and parasites so it's really a lovely product to use and the advantage is that betadine can help you to moisturize your wound so if you have a dry wound go ahead and paint it with betadine also remember that betadine can cause allergies so you need to test whether the patient has an allergy to betadine prior to use of this product Qtmed Sorbact is another superb product it can be used for infected wounds remember that it doesn't contain much of alginate or hydrogel or stuff like that it's a special kind of a gauze piece which has a material called DACC DACC is dialkyl carbamol chloride this is a bactericidal agent and Qtmed Sorbact will adsorb the bacteria so all the bacteria stick to its surface and once they stick to its surface the DACC will render the bacteria dead now once the bacteria dies further absorption adsorption takes place and this is a vicious cycle and Qtmed Sorbact has been shown by the studies to reduce the bio burden of the wounds and create improvement in the wound because once the bacteria is taken off you are doing an infection control and the protease level will reduce and that's how the wound starts healing so go ahead and use these range of products Qtmed Sorbact, Iodine, Honey, Silver Cell, PHMB etc when you are having wounds which are infected and you need to use an antiseptic material on them thank you so much for watching the video if you'd like to contribute any points or you like to edit them or you feel that something is amiss or should be updated either leave your comments below or send me an email thanks again